Hi everybody, Stephanie Kraft here talking about twin flames and the ego versus the soul. So in a human body, we're operating out of an ego. An ego is basically here as um, the vehicle through which we operate in order to give us the perception of individuality and separateness from each other. And yet the ultimate truth is that we're all connected and we are all one. But in order to play out our roles here on Earth, we, um, we have to have an ego. We'll never eliminate the ego while we're in a human body. However, we can integrate our ego and we can transcend our ego to a great degree. It's through the ego that we experience suffering. Now, if we can transcend the egoic mind and the egoic desires and operate more from the level of the soul, we can reduce our suffering. So it's a great dilemma and challenge when we meet our twin because it stirs up within us great desires to connect and to reunite and become one with that other aspect of ourselves. Now, a lot of people are uh, grieving and in deep states of pain and they have jealousy and um, longing and all kinds of you know, lower emotions, emotions that bring them down and make them feel bad. And so every time these feelings are arising through the connection with the twin, I think it's a really good idea to, to recognize within yourself that these are egoic desires. And there's true freedom in the soul. So if you can think about the soul's perspective of your life here on earth, that can help. So if you feel jealousy, for example, if your twin is with another partner, um, you know, recognize that the soul knows that there can be no betrayal and that each of us are here, each of us is here on a, our own journey to learn what we've decided to learn in this lifetime or how we wanted to expand or what we wanted to experience. And so it's a matter of being in allowance, complete allowance for what your twin is doing. And I know it's really painful and it's really hard and that's why I'm making this video is to say, recognize that it's your ego that's in pain and it's your ego that's telling you that it should be a certain way. Now, the soul doesn't have these kinds of desires. The soul is okay with however it plays out because its desire is for expansion and experiences. And it's stretching the soul for you to have these experiences of meeting your twin, reconnecting with that other part of you, and then experiencing the dramatic polarities and experiences that can happen between the two of you navigating through this life. And so it can ease your suffering if you realize that desiring your twin, wanting your twin to be a certain way or to be with you is actually stemming from the ego. And basically we were brought up in this world that with the ideas that when you meet somebody that you're connected to like that at the soul level, that you, of course you would just um, come together in a romantic relationship. But that might not be the contract for every twin flame. Um, I'll do a separate video on soul contracts with twin flames, but just a very brief idea to get across in this video is that not all twin flames have a contract to actually be together. Some of them have a contract to just meet. And what happens when you meet is that spiritual awakening, kundalini activation, heart activation, and really literally changing your timeline and changing your life path. It's a catalyst for very strong movements in your life. Now, what most people do is they equate 
all of these feelings and this connection with a romantic relationship. And then the egoic desires come in. So this is where we need to learn how to transcend the ego and really get into the soul mind. It's not easy. We're not very consciously aware of what our soul is desiring for us. But if we go inward and recognize and acknowledge and become the observer of our ego, then we can see where we're creating suffering for ourselves. So any kind of desire, any kind of righteousness that you feel that you're you know, going into ownership, like your twin you know, has to come to you, or you need to be with your twin, or um, any of those things. There's a lot of jealousy that comes up, and um, anyway, it's culture, it's conditioning, it's, it's that we think that we are supposed to have certain things, and yet, if you think about, um, you know, a monk, who will forego earthly pleasures to devote themselves to um, creating, really actually embodying a, a divine vibration within themselves to serve the world through their connection with their soul and God. And so, you know, we didn't all ask to come into this lifetime to become monks and I totally understand that and we've met our twin for a reason but honestly to relieve, relieve some of your suffering I think it's wise to acknowledge where you're coming from the ego and then really let it dissolve you you can do this you can dissolve the egoic desires and, and, and See yourself as devoting your life to your soul's growth, and that might be tempering your ego, tempering your what you feel is like righteously yours. The twin is yours just because you're one. So, you know, the fact that you might have to give up on having your twin with you in your physical life, either for a period of time or, you know, for the rest of this life. I don't know, you know, people's contracts. Um, but the fact of the matter is that not all twins are together right now in the moment. And so it's really about, um, you know, maybe you could just rise as, rise up as much as possible into the soul mind and perceive what your soul might want for you. Does your soul want you to become empowered from within? Or does your soul want you to seek outwardly for external fulfillment? I don't need to answer that one for you. Does your soul desire for you to be become, learn inner peace and wholeness and fulfillment from within, probably. And I'm not saying that not all twins are going to be together, but I am saying that, you know, in order for that to happen, a lot of these egoic desires need to be released and integrated into you so that you can become in alignment with your higher self and your power. Okay, so when you release some of these desires and you're operating more out of the soul mind, you are becoming empowered within your body, here in your physical body on earth being pulled in the direction of your ego desires creates weakness, weakness in your energy field. I know there was something else I wanted to say. <laughs> um, there's a lot, but 
I should probably figure out a way to read from notes or something, but I don't. I'm just talking off the top of my head. And so I think that's it for this video. And I will be making more, so I will see you soon.